it's really important that you understand this definition, feeder. So when we talk about conductors for light and power, we break them up into three different types of circuits. We have branch circuits, we have feeder circuits, and we have service conductors. Now, service conductors are from the utility, ultimately, and they end at the service disconnect, the first place where you can shut them off. That, that's where the service conductors end. So really, in the grand scheme of things, we don't spend a lot of time with service conductors because it's just, you know, from the utility to the first place you can shut off the utility, <clears throat> that's your service conductors. Everything else is a branch circuit or a feeder circuit. Now, when I say everything else, I'm not talking about control circuits and communications, you know, things like that. I mean conductors for lighting and power. We have feeders and we have branch circuits. And it's really important that you know the difference between the two. So the definition of a feeder circuit is the conductors between the service equipment, which service equipment is the service disconnect. So the first place you can shut it off, shut off the utility. This uh, piece of equipment that we're looking at is service equipment, all right? If you're not familiar with this, uh, over here on the left, the utility pulls in their conductors, that's their meter, and there you go. That's where the utility conductors end. Over here, we have up to six service disconnects in this enclosure. Now, this doesn't comply anymore due to some changes made in uh, 230.71b, but just kind of go with me here. The service ends at the service equipment, and that's what this is. So that's where your feeder conductors would start, the conductors between the service equipment or the source of a separately derived system or other power supply source, and the final branch circuit over current devices. Okay, so in this picture here, we've got what what's probably a 400 amp service. We've got two 200 amp breakers next to each other, supplying 200 amp panels and a house. Maybe one's in the basement and one's upstairs. So those are feeders, right? They start at those two breakers and they end at those two panels. Over here on the right, we've got some branch circuits. So up here, we've got maybe a, a two pole 30 and a two pole 40, and they're going to two air conditioners. Now, this is the disconnect for the air conditioner. So it, it goes right out of the breaker, right into the air conditioners. Those would be branch circuits, right? The branch circuit starts at the last breaker or fuse, and ends at the utilization equipment. So everything between there is a feeder circuit. Everything between the service disconnect and the branch circuit over current devices. So a, a feeder circuit usually starts at a breaker or fuse and ends at a breaker or fuse. That's how it usually is. Let's take another look here. Here I've got a panel board on the right. I've got some disconnects for my air conditioners. Okay, well, is this a feeder circuit going from the panel to the disconnect, or is it a branch circuit? Well, it starts at a breaker or fuse, so that's good. It's, it's either a feeder or a branch circuit. What does it end at? Does it end at a breaker or fuse? If it ends at a breaker or fuse, then that would be a feeder. But maybe these disconnects here don't have fuses in them. Maybe it's just a pull-out disconnect. If that's the case, then this would be a branch circuit, starting from the panel, feeding the non-fuse disconnect and going through to the utilization equipment. But again, if there was a breaker or fuse in here, that means the branch circuit would start at the disconnect and end at the unit, and the feeder circuit would start at the breaker and at the fuse disconnect. So again, if this was not fused, there would not be a feeder circuit. It would just be a branch circuit. So usually, they start at a breaker or fuse, end at a breaker or fuse. So 100 amp breaker feeding a panel board, feeder circuit. But they can also start, instead of a breaker or fuse, they could also start at the source of a separately derived system. So the conductor is leaving a generator, because maybe this generator does not have a breaker or fuse in it. If that's the case, then the conductors leaving it are not service conductors. Service conductors can only come from a utility. They would not be service conductors. They would not be a branch circuit because they didn't start at a breaker or fuse. 
they would be a feeder circuit. So this would be a feeder circuit. Another kind of more obscure example would be the conductors both supplying and leaving a transformer. You see, a branch circuit starts at a breaker or fuse and ends at utilization equipment. Well, a transformer is not utilization equipment. So I've got a 100 amp breaker or whatever it might be supplying the primary of the transformer and then it leaves the power source and feeds a breaker or fuse. All of that is going to be a feeder circuit. More specifically, if I go to 240.21c, we would call those transformer secondary conductors, but at the end of the day, they are in fact a feeder circuit. So there you go. That's the difference between feeders, branch circuits, and service conductors. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and ring the bell.